Welcome to part seven of our introduction to Illustrator activity here. If you're in the handout, we are on number 42. It's sunglass time. So in the last session, we created a face and then we started creating a second face and we created a mouth and we created some hair using the pen tool. Now we're going to go back to our basics and create using rectangles and rounded rectangle to make some sunglasses. But then we're gonna use a new tool that we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead back over here to your shape tool and let's create a rectangle. It's gonna be the like line of the sunglasses, if you will. So something like this. And again, we can make it real big and then come back later on and um, modify sizes of things, but we want it to be a thin rectangle, okay? And then we're going to create the sunglass and that's gonna be using a rounded rectangle. You could do it, I guess, with an ellipse, but I used a rounded rectangle. Um, so we come in here, kind of put this here about midway. Now I don't like that, that's rounded a little too much for me. So I'm pressing the down arrow on my keyboard so that, yeah, there we go. So that that's about the size that I like. Okay, back to home base always, right? Back to home base always. And then I need a copy of this. Now we don't have to use that reflect button on this one because it's, it, it's just a, you know, a simple shape. What you can do if you just need to make a copy is hold down the Alt key on your keyboard down by your spacebar and then point to it. Notice you get two, you get a double arrow. It's like black and white at the same time. And then click and drag. There we go. To create a copy and then let go when you get it. Oops. Where you want it. Okay. You can also use your arrow keys to scoot things over a little bit. I feel like these sunglasses have way too long of a line behind them. So I'm going to pull this line in a bit and then scoot these over some more. So it's something like that. Again, it's just a Lego guy. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Okay, there we go. These are pretty ugly sunglasses, but it's fine. Oops. So what I did here is accidentally grabbed a hold of one of those white arrows. I'm going to press undo. Um, these little white dots adjust your curve. So when you have a rounded rectangle, you've got those right white dots that adjust the curve. So be careful. If you grab a hold of those, you're accidentally going to move things around. Okay, I feel like I still need to scoot that over just a little bit. Okay, so there we go. We've got our sunglasses at this point. Now, we're going to turn this into one shape. And I know you're thinking, well, okay, select them all and use the Pathfinder. You're right, that does work. But I do want to introduce you to another tool, which is called the Shape Builder. The Shape Builder is cool because you can do multiple things with it that we haven't done yet, like punch out areas and combine areas all in the same time. We're not going to do both of that here, but let's just find the Shape Builder tool. Your shape builder tool looks like two circles with a thing pointing to them. Um, when you do that, provided you have a selection first, and I was already selected on my rectangle and my two eye parts of my sunglasses, um, I'm going to use the shape builder and you just point to it. Let me zoom up so you can see. You point to it and they turn grainy, right? And so as you drag, you decide what parts are going to be connected. So like technically, I can connect this part to this part and this part to this part. See, I'm drawing lines. So like this piece is actually not connected. So right now I have three shapes out of these. Now we are gonna go ahead and select them all so that it would be like we used Unite, but I just want you to see how you can take parts of shapes and select them and put them together. Okay, so now here's what we have. But again, we could have done that a little bit differently um, with this Shape Builder tool if we didn't want it to all be one piece. All right, um, let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom back out, back to home, back to your V tool. Always, always, right? And let's make these sunglasses smaller. Oh, my. I have really big um, sunglasses here. All right, I think my mouth is humongous, so let's size this thing down. I really probably should be zoomed up right now because this guy's probably got obnoxiously big sunglasses. All right. <laughs> now, remember, I sort of tested out the hair so that I knew it would fit roughly. So hopefully this all works. Okay, so I think that's okay. At this point, let's go ahead and group it. Right, right click and group. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over, click off of it. I'm gonna come over and move this head out the way. And then we'll position this head. And who this head isn't working, right? That is, that is bad stuff here. So <laughs> we're gonna have to go ahead and get inside this group and fix it. So double click. All right, now that I'm inside the group, I can resize my sunglasses to be a more manageable size and position. I can resize my ridiculously large mouth and make it look better. There we go. Okay, so now I'm in the group. Remember, get outside the group, double click. All right, so see now I have a head that I can put over here or a face rather and use as I see fit. 
Okay, I'm going to control minus to scoot back out. So we've got two different face versions. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do another, another tool that you don't know. We're going to use over here in your tools a fancy little thing called the blob brush. It hides underneath the paint brush. So if you press B, you would access the paint brush. If you click and hold, you get the blob brush. Okay, um, so I'm going to click on the blob brush. The blob brush is kind of cool. Um, the paint brush doesn't do this, so you have to use the blob brush to do it. As you draw, it's like it unites automatically, like the, pay, like the Pathfinder would do. So the more you draw, the more it just adds all the pieces together. Now, the brush doesn't do that. Uh, when you use the brush and you draw and then you let go and then you draw again, it makes each of those a separate shape. Um, in order to make your blob brush bigger or smaller, this is under instruction 45, you're going to use the bracket buttons to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. So look down on your keyboard, find the letter P. There's a left bracket and a right bracket. I'm pressing the left bracket now over and over. See how my brush is getting littler? I'm pressing the right bracket now over and over. See how that circle's getting bigger? That's how you can adjust the size of your brush, okay? So now I'm just drawing some like perm tear, if you will, right? I'm just kind of using this and drawing some stuff. And I can let go and then add some more in here if I want to. As long as it's touching, it'll be fine, okay? So there we go. Not my, and you can change your brush size too if you don't want all of the pieces to be this humongous. Um, you could use that arrow key or the bracket key and size those down. Okay. Now, if I let go here and I go back to my black arrow tool, see this is all one shape. Every one of those blobs connected and became one shape. All right. So we want to make sure it's black. I mean, or it could be a different color if you want it to be. Um, and then no stroke. We don't want a stroke on here. Okay. Now let's move the hair off to the side. And we're going to work on the other part of the face. We're going to make a mustache. So this is going to be fun. We're going to use um, the effects again. But let's start with an ellipse. Okay. And we're just going to draw like a little ellipse here. Again, I'm going to draw it kind of in position and then move it off just so I can see where I'm at. And then, or you could do it up here even. And then we're going to turn this into a half of a mustache. <laughs> so we're going to go back to effects. And this time, back to warp. And this one we're going to go to is called flag. There we go. See that flag. Now that's going a little bit insane here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bend and then I'm going to do some horizontal distortion so that it looks a little bit different on there. So I'm going to put my bend. Um, there you go. See like that. So it's sort of, I don't know, like a mustache to me goes off that direction like so. So my bend is about 40, 44 um, percent. Horizontal distortion. If you drag it to the right, See how the left-hand side over there gets littler, you know, and like somebody combs their fancy little mustache out, it's skinnier down there on the end, right? That's what I'm going after, okay? So find something that sort of looks like that, if you like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Now, remember, we talked about this before, this is an effect, it's a special effect, so this isn't a real shape yet, right? We got to make it real. So in order to make it real, we go to Object and Expand Appearance. See how now it's a real shape? If I take a hold of my black selection arrow, I can then size it down and make it more like <clears throat> a little mustache, right? Like so. Now, obviously, we need to reflect it. And if we wouldn't have made it its own shape, we would not have been able to reflect this properly, okay? So if you run into a problem right now, like you're trying to do this next step and it's like going crazy, you forgot to turn this into a path. So moving on. Once we expanded this, this should say path up here. And that's how you know this is now a path, not a special effect thing. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and transform. Right click, transform, um, reflect. And we want to copy to make the other half of the mustache. Okay. Pick up your other half. And then you can put it together. And bam, we have a mustache. I'm going to select both pieces. Now, if you're on top of the face, you're not going to be able to draw a box to select both pieces because you'd also select the face. So either move these off to the side or while you're clicked on one, hold shift and click the second one. And now those two pieces are selected. And then you can use Unite on your Pathfinder or you could go and use your Shape Builder. But bam, there we go. Now we've got it. And then you could do whatever you wanted. Um, if you wanted to make some simple little glasses um, or whatever to go along with this, you could do that. I'm going to zoom back out and just make a quick little something or other here. So here's my 
We'll just say his mouth's covered up by his mustache so you can't see it. And then I'd make some eyeballs. I'm just going to, I'm just going to have my pencil tool and an ellipse tool and just kind of call it a day. So I'm going to make me uh, some like glasses. So we'll make this white with a black stroke around it. Not doing anything you haven't done before here yet. And then I'll put a little dot in the middle, a little circle in the middle for a little dot for an eyeball. Right? Like that. Um, and then we'll pretend these are kind of like glasses. So I'll take my pencil tool and just draw a little bridge for my glasses. Like that. Not the prettiest thing ever. These are some ugly glasses, but it's okay. And then <laughs> I'm going to group my eyeball. Group. I'm going to make a copy of it, transform, reflect, copy, and put the other side over here. Oops, I did not give that a color in the middle, so my pencil is sort of showing there. Um, so I'm going to double click and get inside here. I need to make sure that this ellipse, indeed, oh, I guess it's just a matter of a range here. My pencil tool is somehow in front of the other. So again, I can modify that. Let's go ahead and zoom up so I can show you that. We can modify this by grabbing hold of that white direct selection. Remember the white direct selection? It allows you to move your points around. So I can move my points around here if I don't like the way that my pencil turned out. And I can fix them. I just really have way too many points on this when I did it. It's okay. We don't care that it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, this one's kind of rough. But again, I don't get into every single tool that exists in this intro workshop. So we're kind of like making do here. All right. Good enough. All right, we got some we got some glasses. I'm going to group these, which we should know how to do at this point. Uh, and then we'll put these all together so that we have our third face option. He looks like a, I don't know, a biology teacher. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to group my face. Oops, apparently I'm clicking everything. Right click and group. And we've got our, there we go. All right, so we've got three faces here. Um, let's give it a save. We are at the end of this session and honestly, kind of almost at the end of this workshop. What we're going to do last is in the next session, we're going to export this out so I can show you how you could use your character elsewhere. So stay tuned for that. Give it a save and I'll see you back in the next part.